Now you guys might think headlight polishing is a joke, but I'm gonna show you right here that it isn't. You've seen other videos that says it isn't, but there's the after, there's the before. We're gonna show you how I did it, and we're gonna show you how I did it pretty darn easy. Hi there folks, and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Nope, not working on an outboard or a boat this time, and I apologize. I know you guys wanna see that more and more, your viewership, but I also want to share Take a minute to tell you that if there's something I do on a vehicle or anything around my house that I think other people could take advantage of or learn from and help make their lives just a little bit better, that's why I put this content out there. I know that I know you folks that are diehard outboard motor enthusiasts and, and the uh, boat enthusiasts, I get it. I totally get it because I know I've got people I follow as well. And not always do they work on the stuff I want them to work on, but I find the person somewhat entertaining, so I hang out. Plus, by viewing them, I'm helping them out, helping support their channel. I give them that thumbs up and I hit that subscribe button to try to grow their channel too. Uh, give, give them some love and support. What I wanna share with you today is an update on my 2011 Impala. It currently has 157,800 miles. Back a year or so ago now, maybe two, almost two maybe. Maybe it's only a year and a half. I changed the transmission solenoids in the transmission because the symptoms were added, boy, that sun is behind the cloud and it felt like somebody turned the faucet off on my head. That's good. It's only like 80 degrees out, but the humidity is like up to here. It's nuts. Mine was doing some shifting, funky shifting stuff, which was at a stop, at a stop light or a four way stop, I'd come up to a stop wait there, my turn to go, I go to go, give it a little gas, a little hesitation, come up to 1500 RPM or so, maybe 1800 RPM, all of a sudden, boom, it drops into gear and go. And it would only do that occasionally. And mind you, the whole time, I want you to take note of this, if you don't take away anything else, I want you to take this away. I've changed, I've had this car since it had 52,000 miles on it, and I have changed the transmission fluid 50,000 miles or more often, and my transmission fluid has always been nice, bright pink. You wanna make sure that's happening. Now, I also had some shifting issues between first and second, second and third, where you'd see it kind of hover before it actually lock into the next gear. And so I, I tell you all that information because I have people leave comments. It's like, hey, do you think this will fix my transmission? And that's all they'll leave a comment about. And I'm like, how am I supposed to answer that? Uh, so. Some of the things I want you to watch for that might be able to answer your own questions is if your transmission fluid has been changed often and it's still bright, bright pink. And now, now I don't mean it's bright pink after you change the brown sludge out of it. And it's like, it's bright pink and it's not shifted right. Well, you got other problems because you had it, you let it get to brown sludge too late. Your transmission is probably toast. But if you've had it your, for a long period of time and you've kept it changed and your transmission fluid's pink and this symptoms start happening, it could very easily be the transmission shift solenoids. It could be the uh, pressure sensor. It could be any kind of things in there. I replaced about 350, I think there was like five or six different things I replaced that are just electronics from AC Delco, plugged, plugged, unplugged them, plugged them in, filled it back up, buttoned everything back up. And it's not an easy job, guys. I don't, I don't, it's not for the meek at heart at all. But if you're gutsy and you watch my video, my other video, I'll have a link in the, below, in the description below to get to that one so you don't have to sit there and search for it. Um, you might be able to bring your car back around. So, or you might be able to take it somewhere and go, pretty positive it's the shift solenoids. Can we just change that out and see what happens? Now that's between you and your repair guy. I don't want anything to do with it, okay? But, so I did this one at 124,600 miles. It now has 157,800 miles. So over 30,000 miles later, the repair still works and is in place. Awesome, right? So the other thing, uh, and, and so I just wanted to give you an update on that because some people keep, ask, keep asking me, is it still working? Is it still working? Yes, it works fantastic. I, I, I have all the confidence in the world. I'm gonna get to 200,000 miles, maybe 225, because at 124 is when I had to do it. I may have to do it all over again. The clutches may actually be worn on the transmission this time. We'll, we won't know. So, but if I get it over 200,000 miles, I'm not unhappy. Cause I got out of this one pretty cheap by about $350 and about, let's just call it 10 to 12 hours worth of labor, my own labor. 
Now, for the rest of you guys that don't want to see how I change my oil, go get you a, a cold snack, your favorite beverage, some chips and dip, and uh, come back here in about five minutes. I'll have the oil changed. And I want to talk. I'm going to talk about a couple other things. You know, you got your transmission filter, you got your oil filter, you got your air filter. I changed those. There's one filter I've never changed since I've owned the car, and I'm kind of curious to see what it looks like. Um, it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the the performance of the engine, but it has to do with the performance of the air that you breathe inside your car. car. It's the cabin air filter. I mean, they don't make it easy either. It's it's like not in an obvious place. You wouldn't look at this car and go, well, there's another filter. Nope, not at all. You got to do some, some disassembly required. And I'm going to show you how to change that filter out if you haven't done it yet. It's probably not a bad idea. Now, I run all Wix air filters. I am not sponsored by Wix, but they make really good products. So I try my best to get Wix oil filters, Wix air filters, everything. You can buy Fram. I'm not going to say anything bad about it. I don't. So we're gonna change the other three filters in this car today. Plus, I'm gonna give you an update on my headlights. So you can look at my headlights here and go, well, they don't look as pretty as they did when you did it about nine months ago, last summer. Last fall, I polished these headlights and they look beautiful. Now they're starting to lay, lose a little bit of their luster and, and clearness. I'm gonna tell you why. The, and so stay tuned for that. I know I've done a couple of headlight polishing videos and you guys can just crucify me all you want in the comments. I'm still gonna do it because I wanna share something with people. If they, if it can help them out, I'm gonna do it. I know, I know you guys love the boats or you love the motors, but I gotta share any information that will help somebody else out while I'm doing it. It does take me a lot of extra time to video and to edit and to publish. Uh, I, could, I could zip through all this stuff. I could get more done, <laughs> let's just say that. But um, maybe it's just my inner wanting to be a teacher of some sort, Sh share my knowledge. You know, people that share their knowledge are the greatest people in the world to me. People that don't share their knowledge and experiences um, don't seem to help a lot of other people out, or, but to each his own. You guys, let's dive in. Let's get this oil changed. I got it. It's warm. The car was running. I'm going to drain it while it's hot so I can get uh, third, fourth, eighth degree blisters on my hands. I'm going to put some rubber gloves on. But uh, you want to change it while it's hot because all that stuff in particular are floating around in there and it's excited in the oil. And when you pull the plug, they just go right on down the raging river into your oil pan. And then you get rid of all those contaminants and then you top it back off with some fresh oil and the engine gets really happy about that. Let's get the oil drained. Skip ahead about five minutes, see where I'm at. After I don't blame you for not watching the oil change. I'm just putting it out there for everybody that hasn't changed oil in the car yet, you know. There's young people out there that need to know how to change the oil in their car. You know, meep, meep. Jiffy Lube, can you change my oil? Well, I have nothing against people that want to do that, but a pair of car ramps. Get underneath there. Get familiar with your ride. Nothing wrong with that. Now I'm going to give you guys a recommendation here. Go to Harbor Freight. Get you a couple of these moving blankets. They're cheap. And I like, I like them just for this fact right here. I can lay them down on the ground, on the concrete. Squirm around underneath my vehicle. And not worry about getting dirty. Everybody always asks, Michael, how do you, how come you work in those nice shirts? Well, I don't use my shirts for grease rags, that's why. So all I'm doing down here is draining the oil. Now, I apologize, the sound quality is going to change a little bit because I'm not using my, my mic, I'm using just the GoPro. But I'll try to modulate it the best I can and edit. But uh, yeah, just break that nut loose. And here's where the gloves come in handy. It kind of gives you a little insulation between the heat. But, uh, there we go. We'll let that drain till she's dripping dry. It's good and hot, so it flows really nice. And way under here, take a look at a few other things. Take a look at your CV joints on your axles, see if the rubber boots are cut or not. 
you know see if you see any other oil leaks going on if everything looks pretty dry and you don't see any weird wear on your tires you might be might be doing okay for yourself so the nice thing once the oil is still draining and slowing down on this particular car hello mr motorcycle going by i can slide it up here and i can actually take and get my uh oil filter out and let it drip and not make a mess either it's just catching everything now this one here i put a nap of gold in there because it didn't have a wix but i got a gold a wix going back in see now i can pull my glove off hands sparkly clean and we're ready to put a new oil filter in there and we'll put the oil plug back in and we're ready to top it off easy peasy right now the next filter we're going to change is the air filter and honestly it's pretty simple overall clip clip and then you can just move this out of the way it can be a little bit of a wrestling match though because it does fit in there kind of tight they don't give you a lot of wiggle room and this one wasn't too bad i'm pretty sure this is a frame we're going back in there with the wicks. Now when you get your new air filter, kind of size it up. Make sure it's the, yeah, same size. And put it in the right way, of course. We're gonna have to shove this back in there somehow. Let's see if I can do it this way. I don't know. Oh yeah, well, that went in easier than it came out. The other one came out. That's usually the opposite experience I have typically. Oh, that's in there. Now the important thing is to get the bottom. There's a couple of ears down here you want to get latched into the bottom. Hold the bottom in place. Once you're assured those are in place, clamp the top. Booyah. Locked and loaded. Now the last filter. Now according to what I saw, I'm going to show you the two points I'm going to pull out. Right down here, there's a little clip that you got to actually take and pop the center up. And there's another one over here. I'll be able to show you better on this one. You got to get underneath here, pry this up like that. And then it'll allow you to remove, you can pull it all the way out. And it'll allow you to remove this little keeper right here. It just kind of traps this uh, cowling. See that there? That's now free. We're going to do the second one over here. I think there's only two. I'm just using a little screwdriver to get in here and pop that off. Just to pop that center up. Don't take much. And my understanding is you got to pull this off too a little bit. You don't have to pull all of it off, just part way. And then this should lift out. Yes, indeed. Now you want to be careful here. Because you got your windshield washer tubes hooked in here. And now, now what do we got? Oh, this comes out. This this little piece of cowling here comes out. Oh my goodness gracious! Woo wee! I'm scared to touch it. That's kind of nasty looking. Look at that. That is just full of stuff and right below there's your fan so can you guys see that there is just mice have eaten some of this sons of guns and then yeah there's some wow i can't believe my car didn't stink well let's see if this is a replacement in here hey look at there you look at that now sometimes they have airflow so it shows the air here going down so it's coming down in this way so that's how I want to put it back in here why that's gonna be nice just knowing I'm breathing cleaner air mercy sakes so we'll stick this guy back Clips. 
Hey, my buddy's here. All right. That's back in place. We'll slip this back in place. And we'll put the little clippers back in. That was easy. I will definitely do this more often. We'll put our rubber strip back. Life is good. Now we gotta add our oil. Yep, gotta add oil. Don't forget that. Now after you've done all this, whatever you do, don't forget to put your motor oil back in because that'll ruin your day if you don't. We're going to try out my awesome pouring skills here. Hmm. What do you guys think? Can I do it? Can I do it? Whoops, there's a little miss. Now this car takes about four and a half quarts. Well, I started it up, everything sounds good. All the filters are filtering again. I should, who knows, I might get another half a mile per gallon because I got a fresh air filter in here. It's gonna make the car run more efficiently. We got some fresh lubrication in the motor. Now, one thing I wanna tell you is, I've changed the oil in this car so many times, and I used to run Valvoline 5W30, and now I run uh, Mobile One 5W30. I've been running full synthetic oil in this car since I've owned it. And I've also let you know that at 157, almost 158,000 miles, this car consumes a, a quart of oil. That's going to sound like a lot. Every six to 7,000 miles. So, you know, some people might go, oh, God, the motor's... Nope. Nothing wrong with the motor. It's just, it's just going to consume a little bit. It's got some miles on it. You know, and, and six to 7,000 miles between oil changes, because I, I go by the oil life management system in the car. That starts off at 99% and goes down to 0%. I'm gonna trust the engineering that's behind it. And I have been, and it hasn't cost me anything. You know, the engine is still doing exactly what it's been doing. Uh, some engines will consume some oil, some engines will not. This one has always consumed some. And like I said, a quart every, so I shouldn't say, I shouldn't say that. It's a quart because when it gets up to about 3,000, 3,500 miles on the engine, I'll check it and it'll be a half a quart low. And then I'll take that other half a quart out of my four and a half quarts I put in here. There's a half a quart I always have left. I'll top it off with that half a quart. And then by the time it's due for its oil change, another 3,000 miles, 3,500 miles later, it's a half a quart down. So pretty, pretty easily managed. Um, it's uh, nothing that I'm concerned about or ever would be concerned about on any vehicle because that's very, very low consumption. The spark plugs in this thing, and when I changed the spark plugs out at 100 and, uh, what was it, 120? But yeah. There's a video on it, how I did it. At about 124,000 miles, 120,000 miles, I changed the spark plug. 124, 25, actually. It was after I did the transmission work on it. Anyway, the spark plugs still look like brand new. They're the, the, the original AC Delco Iridiums. They say you're supposed to change them out at 100,000 miles. It went a little further because this thing was giving me no indication of it having any problems with spark plugs. It started right up, fired right up. On the highway, it gets 29 to 31 miles to the gallon, depending on winds on the wind and uh you know for a 3.5 liter that's v6 with plenty of power that's pretty decent mileage but anyway i know that i put four four and a half quarts in here i don't have to check the dipstick to make sure it's full i know it is 
because I've done it many, many times before. But also make sure you look underneath and make sure that the underside has no leaks that you've generated by doing your own oil change because uh, that could create some headaches you don't want to deal with, like a, let's just call it a seized up motor. And uh, by the time you hear a motor start knocking, it's too late. All right, now on to the, onto some, let's make something, let's make something a little prettier. And uh, we'll wrap that video up, but watch this. I think, you'll, I think you'll find this, what I'm getting ready to do next, a little bit interesting. All right, we're gonna go after this headlight again. You might have saw in a video, let's see if I can zoom in here. You might have seen in an earlier video of mine where I just polished these Jeep headlights. They still look fantastic. As a matter of fact, they're, they're kind of outshining the rest of the Jeep, but that's okay, because I need to be able to see. Now I'll leave the kit that I use to polish up those Jeep headlights because that's important, because what I'm getting ready to use here is actually some leftover stuff from that kit. We're gonna use the masking tape that was left over to kind of protect to make sure I don't screw up my paint. And it's a fairly warm day out today. It's, I think the humidity actually might be down a little bit from the other, from yesterday. Yesterday was, my goodness. It was literally 76 degrees in the morning with 76% humidity. And it made the faucet on top of my head turn on wide open to so much that it was burning my eyes when I was trying to work on my yard barn. And here, this tape here is just to protect you from hitting the paint. Now what I'm going to use out of the old kit that I used on the Jeep is the foam pad. And I'm only going to use 800 grit because I've already shined this up. You can see there's some bug blood on here. But I've already polished this up. These aren't that horrible. I just need to bring them back a little bit from last year. And as usual, we're going to use a little bit of water. And the water keeps from the pad loading up. Instead of my spray bottle, I got a little garden hose here with a little bit of mist on coming on. So we're just going to wet that down like that and go after it with this 800 grit. And this is, this, I'm using this 800 grit to basically do more or less just a cleaning job for me. Now I'm using my drill on low here. Uh, 800 grit. Took that bug guts right off of there. <laughs> my goal this time is to, is to do a, something that's not going to start looking dull after nine months worth of exposure to the elements and weather and all that fun stuff. I can see a little bit of shading difference here. Let's see how uniform we can get it here. Don't hold your hand over the back part of this, your drill. It needs to breathe. Oh, it sounds like my drill needs a battery. Let's get a battery.
let's just say I'm okay with that now. We're going to go back to the 3,000 grit pad. 3,000 grits. Looks like I only count 2,999 grits on there, but we'll just, we'll take their word for it. Now I'm going to hit it with a 3,000 grit. And you're trying to get rid of the 800 grit scratches with the 3,000 grit. That's all you're doing. And she'll look pretty good after that. Now, some people left comments that says they use a little dish soap, dish soap in their water if you're using a spray bottle. But uh, you can give that a whirl. It cleans as it helps keep the, basically keep this pad from loading up. That's all you're after is keep the pad from loading up. Now, I'm leaving this in real time so you guys can see, you know, this wasn't a badly hazed headlight, but we can bring it back to something that looks more like its original glory when it was on the showroom floor and somebody besides me went up and says I got to have one of these When you got it that far i think that's pretty good and like i said this is real time so you guys can see how much effort or lack thereof i'm actually putting into this we're going to get all the stuff off of it here give it a little more juice that looks pretty good now I'll take a towel, we're gonna dry it. Make sure she's good and dry. And you will see some spots of shine, some spots of haze and everything in between. When you're done with that 3000 grit, it's not to the high luster polish finish, but what it is prepared for is to hold on to that clear coat. And that's what we're gonna do that is different than what I've done before is the last one came with like a polish and the polish is supposed to kind of seal it but it didn't seem to last very long and the one i did on the jeep had its own clear coat wipe it was an actual wipe which i thought was kind of a neat thing and it seems to work pretty good so now i'm just going to take a little more of this tape i'm going to do a little more masking because i'm getting ready to spray this thing all right, and while we mask that off, that come out nice and dry. What I'm gonna use is this Meguiar's Keep Clear Headlight Coating. It says, keeps headlights clear for one year, easy spray on application. Are you supposed to shake it? I just shook it, I hope I'm supposed to shake it. it says to apply in the shade to a cool headlight. Well, we're gonna break that rule right now. Headlight's not that hot. Let's just see what it does here. Oh my. That is beyond satisfying. That's even hiding some of the minor imperfections. You guys see this? Is the camera capturing what I'm seeing here? Wow. Wow and wow.
That's impressive. Let me back up here so you can see both headlights here. Now, this one on the right, as we're looking at it, the driver's side, was one I did about nine months ago, and it's back to being hazy and stuff like that because it didn't have the right clear coat on it. I'm curious how this, and I'll tell you what, it never looked as good as this looks right now. Man, that looks like, wow, that's all I can say is that is amazing. And there again, that's real time. Look at even that orange marker light. You can see it. It's, it's, it's like glistening. Now, I don't expect you guys to be as excited as I am, but wow, I'm just mind boggling for sure. Now, should I just drive around with it like that? Because that'd be fun. Just like, hey, look at my, look at, I had, I hit a deer and I had to replace one of my headlights and, and it looks terrible now. No, we're going to do both. I'm going to let that sit there and dry. Let's, let's, let's read some more instructions. Shake well, it says. I didn't do that. Maybe I should have. put two coats on there. Let's give it some extra protection. I have the second side prepped and masked and I'm hoping you can see the change here on, on camera because this is just blows my mind how nice this turns out and I want you to see how I'm spraying it on live I'm gonna let that sit for about a minute and I'll do another coat. Doesn't say anything about multiple coats, but uh, says, uh, well, yeah, it does. It says, apply one medium wet coat of Keep Clear headlight coating to the entire headlight surface, overlapping the previous pass by 50%. Let's stand first coat dry three to five minutes, then follow with a second medium to wet coat completely sealed headlight lens. The coating will dry to the touch in three to five minutes and is fully cured in 24 hours. Well, that's drying pretty fast. So we'll give it another, we'll give it a couple minutes here. Since I'm in the sun, I'm guessing if you were in the shade, three to five minutes would be needed. I'm in direct sunlight, which I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm guessing a minute, a minute and a half is gonna be more than adequate. Okay, it's been about a minute and a half. I'm gonna call that good. There's enough in one can to do at least four headlights. I'll put this in the description below. McGuire's headlight coating. Hooah! There you go, folks. The results are amazing. Now my going, down, going to town rig is gonna to have clean air coming into my cabin. That's gonna be air conditioned. Should have no smells except for what's coming in from the outside. And uh, so we got the oil changed, we got the air filter changed, we got the oil filter changed, we got the cabin air filter changed, and 
If you hung out with me this far, you got to see some amazing before and after results of my polished headlights with the clear coating on it. I ain't kidding you. We'll see how long it lasts. Just like the transmission, beginning of this transmission report out on this video, I'll let you know if this thing starts to fade, if it starts to fade, you know, I'm thinking a year from now, it might just need to go back over with the 3000 and give it another dusting of that spray. Keep her looking new. Now you guys, I'm a big proponent on maintenance, but I'm not always a big propon proponent on cleaning. You know, you saw my engine compartment. My engine compartment is not dust and dirt free. And there's a reason for that. Now, most people want to get in there with their power washers and just power wash these engines and make them look pretty. So when they go to, I don't know, go anywhere, they got a shiny engine. You can't see the engine when you drive it. How many, how many going to town rigs do you have that you, every time you pull into the Walmart parking lot, you pop the hood and, uh, so everybody can see your clean engine. You don't do that. So, and when you power wash it, you're injecting water in areas that does not belong, period. Yeah, they have, you know, modern day connections are really nice and tight, but they're not designed to take 3000 PSI. They're, to tie, they're designed to keep general moisture and splash out, not 3000 or 2000 or 1500 PSI, whatever power wash you have. Don't do it. You're just gonna run into problems. Maybe not right away, but down the road, months, half year, year later, you're gonna run into some corrosion issues that you developed and didn't know you did. Your car is gonna be being acting like a flood car that had moisture in it and dried out and seems to run okay until corrosion starts to take hold. But I hope you guys found this video informative and helpful. I'll see you on the next video. This is Michael saying, if it ain't broken, what do I say? Chuck over there got it. Nice job, Chuck. We, this is all done in front of a live audience. And uh, I know the entire audience by name. Nope, I just know Chuck. And his name's Chuck and he just don't give a hoot about anything I'm doing. So anyway. This is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. See you on the next video. Woo -wee. Fancy like Applebee's on a date night. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Bourbon Street steak in an Oreo shake. <laughs>